So it's happened. The UK has voted to leave the EU. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so it's important to realise it's nothing's going to change overnight. Um, it's not like all of a sudden there's no more entry into Spain or you know, no one's going to accept your passport. They will. And it's going to be a process. And to be honest, it caught me a little bit by surprise. I thought it was actually going to be slightly the other way around where it would have still just scraped in, but almost, you know, half and half. So we've got half the population that want it, half don't. I think some people don't actually even know what they were voting for. It wasn't very, very clear. Um, I think in the long term, we've got some good negotiating power for the UK. I think also it's going to shake up the rest of Europe as well because there'll be other countries that will be looking for um, you know, the same sort of deals or some sort of change. Short term might be a little bit painful. Um, but overall, you know, Alex, it's very important that you don't get into doom and gloom. The world will carry on, you know. It'll keep on turning. It'll keep turning, yeah. yeah. Um, what does it mean, though, in terms of the UK sterling? How will it affect uh, the pound? OK, so the initial reaction for markets is to get out of pounds. You've got to remember with currencies, you're always making two trades. So if you buy the pound, you're selling something else, whether it be yen, dollar, that's the normal one. So what people have done, or what big banks and funds have done, said, right, we want, don't want to hold pounds, so we're selling the pounds we have, and we're buying another currency, and the safe havens tend to be Swiss franc, Japanese yen, and the US dollar, which is still the reserve currency. So the most important currency in the world is the US dollar. Gold is traded in US dollars, oil is traded in US dollars, it's still you know, the central currency. So what will happen is, banks will sell the pound, and move that money into safety of dollars for now. As they feel a little bit more confident, they will then start to reverse that trade and they'll start selling the dollars and moving them back into pounds. So we think of ourselves as obviously a player in the global markets, which we are. Um, how does not being part of Europe affect our position at the table? Okay, we've got to remember the UK also does a lot of business with China, America, which was never part of the EU. There's other world trade agreements for that. Um, so it's not a case. Now, initially, as I say, nothing is going to change. We're still going to be in those um, agreements. What's going to happen as they renegotiate is either going to be new terms or new tariffs and new agreements. Um, so we still will do business. And at the same time, Europe will still sell into the UK. You know, Germany still wants to sell its cars um, to the UK. Um, so then, then they don't want to lock the UK market out. So there's still going to be, um, you know, plenty of two-way trade. So now we know that there's going to be a new Prime Minister, there's going to be a contest between uh, the party to find out who runs the country. How does that affect the way that other countries look at us and think about trading with us? Well, again, day to day, they're still going to deal with us, right? You know, the fact that, we're, because and Cameron has said he's going to stay on, he will still be, um, you know, the Prime Minister, if anything happens. No, he's leaving, he stepped down. Did you not see that? Yes, but he will still be for the next until October. Oh, right, yeah. okay, so right, he's, so, okay. So he's, he's not going to leave instantly today. Okay. What he said is basically by the next, by the autumn when they have their uh, Conservative meeting or um, they'll then look for a new leader. Also, what he's also said is this Article 50, they're not actually going to um, go to Brussels and present it for the next few months as well, just while things sort of stabilise out as well. Um, I think he's doing the right thing because it's hard for somebody who was pro-Europe to now go and negotiate. So what they will do now is look for a leader who is obviously um, was, was on the Brexit side. And obviously at the moment that's like Gove and possibly Boris Johnson could be a deputy. Uh, but someone else still might throw their you know, hat into the ring as well, but it's not going to be somebody who's pro. Um, and then go back in and negotiate.